What's up everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Elliot Delp and today we are going to be reviewing this Monstrum Tactical 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane rifle scope. I'm super excited to get this review done, so let's get right into it. Like I said before the intro rolled, we are going to be reviewing the 6 to 24 by 50 first focal plane rifle scope by Monstrum Tactical. Um, before I really get any further into the video, I would like to say that Monstrum Tactical did send me this optic to test and review on, and I would like to say thank you to them. They were really good about it. They just sent it to me and said, here, do a review on this, and didn't really put any stipulations around it. They weren't like if this optic performs back contact us first they just gave it to me so I really appreciate that alright so let's talk a little bit about everything that has to do with this scope um, first I want to start out by saying price 250 bucks okay 250 bucks for a first focal plane scope regardless of anything is crazy I don't know any optic that is $250 its first focal plane, um, especially that's like a higher magnification. Now, the only thing comparable might be primary arms. Um, they have a $289 first focal plane scope. And that's the only thing I can think of. All right. Um, next thing I would like to mention about this optic is where it comes from. So Monster Tactical is in California. Um, it says right here, Lagua Hill. Laguna Hill, California, but the optic is made in China. So designed in California, made in China. Um, I have nothing to say about that. Uh, and then the warranty on it. So I'm just going over kind of the box things right here, the important stuff. Um, and it does have a two-year warranty, not a lifetime warranty. So keep that in mind. Keep all those things in mind. All right. Um, when talking about features of this optic, I kind of want to start back here and work my way forward. So it does have, let me just take the scope caps off. It did come with scope caps. It comes with scope caps and the, uh, the mounts for the scope. Alright, so you don't have to worry about that when you're picking up this optic. That's a good thing. So you have your um, diopter right here, alright, or your focusing ring. Then you have your magnification, and it is 6 to 24 first focal plane. For those that don't know what first focal plane means, is that as you magnify your optic, your reticle grows with your magnification. And what this does, it allows your holdovers to remain consistent on whatever magnification you're on. So your holdovers at 20 will be the same as your holdovers on 6. Um, this is different from f second focal plane because as you magnify on your second focal plane, your holdovers will change um, and it's very hard to gauge, okay? So that's kind of the difference. And usually first focal plane is used for more of tactical shooting. Second focal plane is used more of a hunting scenario, really. Um, and that's just general, okay? It's not exactly what they're used for everything. There's a million different re reasons to use any of them, okay? So don't get caught up on that. Um, but this is first focal plane. Um, moving down to this, uh, kind of the central part of the optic, you do have exposed turrets, but they do lock, so you pull up on them, you make your adjustments, and you push them back down and you lock them. Um, same for the windage, it does, it works the exact same way. On the opposite side of the optic here, which you can't see, um, you do have your parallax adjustments, and then you have another knob for your illuminated reticle. Um, to talk a little bit about the reticle and not get into too much detail because there's not a lot to really talk about. I'll pop it up here on screen somewhere. Um, it is a fairly simplistic reticle. There's not a ton of holdovers. There's not really a lot of ranging features. Um, you kind of have to know that on your own. How the MOA and all the different math works at different ranges. Um, so it's Basically, you have your windage holdovers and you have your uh, elevation holdovers, and that's pretty much it. Pretty simple, um, but it does the job. As you are on your lower ma magnification, um, I wouldn't say it's hard to see at all. I, I, I think 
as you get larger and larger on your magnification, it, is, it does get more difficult to, uh, or it does take up more and more of the field of view, but that's with Air Nefo's first focal plane optic. It's just something you need to consider. Um, I wouldn't say it's too much at full magnification, but I also don't really like using the optic on full magnification. Um, I think the sweet spot really is about 20 to 18 is when I think it's about perfect. Uh, once you get to 24, I feel like the optic gets a little less um, crisp and clear. I think once you're hovering around the 20 to 18, the optic is about perfect. Um, and this is something I've come to notice with any, I guess, really high magnification optic that goes up to 24, 32, I think. Like, stuff like that. The higher, higher end magnifications. Um, I have a sight mark that is once you go high, high on the magnifications, it's difficult to look through. And I think that's just something that's common. Um, I, and I think it's just something you have to deal with. I'm sure super nice Vortex razors, that's not a problem. But a Vortex razor costs two grand, give or take. This costs $250, all right? But the sweet spot's around 20 to 18 um, the glass is very clear. Like I said, when I'm looking from 6 to 18, it's just like looking through my Vortex Crossfire. Um, very crisp, very clear. You can't really tell the difference at all, really. Um, once you get to 24, like I said, it does get a little blurry. But that's just how it is. Um, moving further down, then you have your main objective, which is your 50 millimeter. All right. So, in terms of like other stuff, this is aircraft grade aluminum, um, which most everything is now, and it does have that nice black anodized finish. Um, so, made out of the stuff every other half decent optic is made out of. All right. In terms of actual performance, I tested it out over the course of a few weekends um, with the 6.5. This is my Ruger Predator. It's going to be my hunting and my tactical. It's kind of like a hybrid. I do a long range shooting with it and I do my normal hunting with it until I get something more suited for just specifically tactical shooting. This is this is what's being used. Um, but I did take it and I, I zeroed it at one weekend and did a little shooting. Then another, sh another time I took it out and... Um, had some distance behind it, 600 yards. Um, I can't get a thousand yards here in Southwest Virginia. If any of y'all have ever been here, the hills are rough, so it's kind of hard to get a thousand yard shot where I'm at, at least. But we did take it to 600, and I I think it worked great. Um, I have no complaints. My buddy shot it, and it, it did fine. It tracked really well when sighting it in. Um, I only used like four or five bullets, I think, when doing it, and most of those were confirmation to zero. I think two of them were confirmation, and the other ones were work my way up, work my way over. Um, so it did do good in that aspect and I, I don't really, I can't find anything wrong with it. Um, illumination works really well, it's very bright and it, it's nice, it's stiff and that's another thing, all these are very stiff, easy to turn, they're not gritty by any means, um, they're nice crisp adjustments or at least the one I have and it, it works really well. Alright, so I guess if we want to talk about in conclusion, I think the optics worth the money. Um, 250 bucks, you're just getting into long range shooting and you don't want to go drop 500, 600, 700 dollars on an optic. This might be the build for you. Um, I have a whole review build on this uh, Ruger Predator right here. I think it does a fantastic job as a budget. Um, budget setup and two hundred fifty dollars in the optic, um, four hundred dollars in the rifle, and another. Well, you can kind of see it. Um, and another thirty bucks in the muzzle brake comes with an adjustable trigger. Can really get into long range shooting for hardly anything. So I would say go pick this optic up. Um, link will be in the description to Monster Tactical's website. You can go pick it up there. Um, I do get a little kickback from that, so I really would appreciate it. Um, if not, it's whatever. I hope you guys enjoyed the review video. If you learned something new or 
Um, if you found it useful, please go hit the like and subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. Um, I love bringing these uh, optic reviews, fire anything firearms. I, I, I love firearms. So any any type of these reviews, I love telling you how I feel about the products um, and just my general thoughts of them. So I hope you guys enjoyed, and as always, take someone outdoors. I will see you guys next time.